Chris BBI here. I want to stop and say thanks. Thanks for tuning in and checking out whatever the video is about that's about ready to come up next. If you could take a minute and hit subscribe, I'd greatly appreciate it. And if you enjoy what you've seen here, make sure to hit the like button. We'd greatly appreciate your support. Anyhow, guys, all that aside, let's get on with the show. Well, we're going to shoot this video come hell or high water. I've tried to shoot this now about four times and the phone keeps ringing. So, like I said, and I've been saying all week, I've been off managing my boss's tow business, doing the dispatching and stuff. So, if the phone rings, you're just going to hear me stop the video and I'll come right back to it. Please just bear with me. So, now we got that out of the way. Gentlemen, ladies, dogs, cats, parakeets, salamanders, chickens, and hamsters. Listen, I, I'm lucky enough that people call me and they, they talk to me about a bunch of different things. One of the things that people call me about is uh, where to go get an amplifier. Now, we're all familiar with this guy's handiwork. All of us, um, for the most part. He used to have a very successful YouTube channel. And by the way, just a heads up to the haters, um, if you're planning on tuning in to see me talk trash about my close friend Tech9, this ain't that video, you can just go ahead and stop watching now. You're not gonna hear me say anything negative about my friend or what he builds, because he builds an awesome product. Just saying that up front. Um, in the beginning, I was getting overloaded with work, and I'm still overloaded with work, and I love it. It's great, and it's a blessing. Well, I started shedding work off to other builders, so before I could go and honestly recommend somebody to another builder, I had to look at what they had going on. So, I luckily, I've got a lot of friends, and I would find... Oh, see, there we go. <laughs> I shall return. Okay, as I was saying... I went out and I, um, through the ability of a few of my friends, we blind bought some amplifiers. We bought one from Gatekeeper, and we bought one from Hopper. We bought one from, well, pretty much everybody, and brought them here and evaluated. See, if I was to call up a builder and say, hey, man, I'm going to buy a box from you, and I'm going to get, like, the Lamborghini treatment, I think, honestly, or it'd be different than the average guy. So what we looked at with all of those people was the delivery time, the quality of the work, how well the amplifier ran once it got here, and we were able to evaluate independently, independently, uh, outside of the other builders, knowing what was going on, um, what was taking place. Okay, so I'd be able to go and make an honest opinion and say, hey, go talk to this guy, or hey, go talk to that guy depending on what part of the country they're in and depending on what they're wanting, what kind of amplifier they want. Well, one of the people that we bought one from was Tech9. Now, we actually bought two. Here's mine. This is my Tech9 1x2. It's a three pill with a variable. And this thing is beautiful. Now, I'm not going to spend a lot of time talking about this little guy because that's not what we're here to talk about. The other one eventually went back to my business partner and he's got it and it's sitting in storage just like this one was sitting in storage. This thing was all in saran wrap sitting up in one of my closets. I had to think about it for like 20 minutes. I'm like, where did I put that? <laughs> Honestly, I couldn't remember. So <clears throat> we brought them here, hooked them up, evaluated them. Things ran perfect. The thing that we had to take into consideration was the coax length difference and how to make the boxes work independently with each other. Now we're going to come back around to that. But that doesn't matter. The delivery time was good. The quality of work was outstanding. And the fact that he hand breaks and makes everything himself is just jaw dropping. And I'm going to show you something here that is a, a beautiful sample of just that. Now, Tech9 is my friend. He's a good guy. He's honest. He's legit. And it's like what I tell people when they call me, I, like, I go, listen, I'm going to give you Tech9's phone number. And there's no bullshit with this guy. He's going to tell you what he wants, you're going to send him the money, he'll build you the amp, and he's going to send it to you. There's no bullshit with Tech9. None. Zero. Okay. Trust me, when I get older, I want to be just like him. Because I called him this morning to talk to him about this video, and uh, we talked for all of about 30 seconds. He goes, hey, look, man, I'm going to go play my drums. Let me know how it turns out. <laughs> 
<laughs> that was it. That was the end of the conversation. Me and him are buddies, you know. He's got no fear because he knows what he built. So this amplifier and the 8-pill that I bought sold me on, one, the man's business ethics, two, um, the quality of component that he builds, device, product, and three, it demonstrated to me the individual's stature and worth. And I was impressed. He, he scored a 10 out of 10 all the way across the board between this and the 8-pill. Now, there's already YouTube videos out there of me reviewing this amplifier and reviewing the 8-pill. So I don't think we need to bring those into the video more than giving you the backstory. What I want to show you is something very rare. There's only a few of these that have ever been built. Um, I don't know the exact number. I kind of went out on a tree limb last night and said that there had only been three or four, but I think there's been more than that built. I know there's only been one 64 pill built, maybe two. This thing is a work of art. Look at this. If I was a salesman and worked at a car dealership, it'd be like working at a Ferrari dealership or a Lambo dealership. Here's the car, it sells itself. that young man back. Now what I mean by that is I don't have to say a whole lot. Double grommeted on the 4 aught cable. 4 aught, not one. 4 aught cable coming in the bag. <laughs> Let's change our perspective a little bit. I have to do a lot of talking the thing sells itself. This is beautiful. This is an absolutely beautiful amplifier. Beautiful. Completely hand assembled. Now for you all that are going to be watching this for the first time, and there's no more Tech 9 videos out there for us to watch. Um, a hater got overzealous and proceeded to make all kinds of complaints and jump up and down. And Tech 9 eventually just took his videos down. It wasn't worth the drama to him. It really wasn't. He's still very much doing his thing. Still very much in the swing of things over there. Very, very busy man, just like myself. So there's no more videos for him to sit down and explain. Tech 9 um, had several videos, well, all of his videos. He would literally start out with a blank sheet of heat sink and build it all the way up. Now, the guys that have never seen one of his videos are going, man, where did he get that cabinet? It's real simple. He went out and bought a sheet of aluminum and he made the cabinet himself. And he completely hand breaks everything. All the, the holes for all the transistors, he had hand drilled that. And I, everything in here is completely hand built. Cabinet on up. 100% hand craftsmanship. We don't find this very much anymore. In anything. Everything wants to be assembly line. Oh man, there's something to be said about the custom hand-built boutique amplifier. Trust me, I know, it's the business I'm in. The things that really set me back on this particular box um, are little details that aren't going to be too common to the normal eye. This has one heat sink in it. Let's uh, bring your attention down here. Let's look at the heat sink stock. That whole thing is heat sink, and the whole width of it's heat sink. There's no break down the middle. Hence the reason the power wires need to come in across the top. There's no gap in between bank A and bank B. 
and the bed of this heat sink is like double the thickness of what you would normally receive. That bed dissipation space is really important about how far the heat can travel, wick out, and how many fins it's going to be centralized on, if that makes sense. And what I mean is, let's grab this hunk of heat sink that I took out of an X-Force here not too long ago. Let's look at this. Add another quarter inch to it, and that's what we've got in here. As you can see, this heat sink very comfortably fits below the board down here. Very comfortably fits below the board, and there's still another quarter inch worth of material. There's a difference. You get what you pay for, is what I'm getting at. The quantity of vent holes the number of combiner stages, the way the combiner stages are laid out. Now, what I wanted to point out is if we could look down in here. Sorry about that. I know that's going to make most of you guys in video land have an upset stomach. So let's look down in here. Each one of these solder pads is on its own piece of phenolic and it's like this thick. It's crazy thick. And that's the way he's got all his input and his output stages put together and combined. Now, that's beautiful and brilliant. But we've seen this before. Now, Tech, I wanted to show you this. These are the ones that we had built. Well, I can't say we that uh, Prime had built that he was using in his uh, 8 pills, 16 pills, and 32 pills. And the reason there's holes in these is so that they can stand up off the board off a little Teflon stand. That makes sense? And then everything, your spacing is all perfect for each section. Now what I use them for is I'll take and I'll slice these in half and I'll sand the edges back and this allows me to do an induction combiner, which is a whole other story that we can cover some other day in another video. But there happens to be about seven million of these sitting in a box someplace. But I'm sure that we'd be able to get you for a fairly decent price, buddy, if you wanted to start using those. It'd save you from having to hand cut these by hand. Just food for thought, my friend. This thing is beautiful, and there's really nothing wrong with this box. But we're going to go ahead and we're going to hook it up. We're going to put it through its paces, and the reason it's here is because it was having really high input SWR issues. And I really think that has to come down to a coax length issue. So this is something I wanted to demonstrate on video and see if we can catch it while it's here at the shop. It's something we can talk about. Now, this has changed a little bit. The fans that are in here are counter-rotating fans that are in this cabinet, in this upper lid. and. Uh, The customer says they're ungodly loud, and I'm like, yes, so? Well, he's trying to run this in a base station application. So we're going to run it through its paces, and I'm going to come back around, and we'll evaluate the fans. We might put a little bit different fan on there that does, I mean, there's screaming amount of CFM there with those fans. So we'll see. We're going to come back to that. But when did he build this? 4-17 of 2017 beautiful absolutely beautiful guys let me cut away from this let me get the bench set up i'm excited <laughs> Woo! i'm excited let me get the bench all set up for this and um we're gonna hit it and quit it and we'll see what we get for some end results on that note okay. we shall return. uh we're gonna start off here we're going left to right i've got my bench two pill in here we've got a 50 watt slug in reverse between the bench two pill and the 32 pill Here's our amp clamp ring. We'll zero that out. And we're going to swing over here to the right. It's a 1,000 watt slug in peak, 1,000 in average, 5 watt slug in reverse. Okay. And what we got over here is extra coax links and some barrel connectors. Now this is important. Because coax is live on an amplifier. It's very 
live. And um, where you put your bird meter is very important. So what a lot of guys do is they'll take and they'll either put a barrel connector and they'll attach the bird line section here, a short a distance from the back of the amplifier. That way the only thing they got to worry about is the coax from the bird meter to the amplifier. That's in the mobile application. Uh, and also in the base application, you want to put your line section as close as you can to the back of the amplifier. Now, for me, where I'm taking things apart and putting things together all the time on the workbench, I have to adopt a different system. So I have to have a one foot jumper worth of coax. So we have a known variant of induction and capacitance. From the bird meter into the amplifier is very important. I do everything in three, six, nine, 12 foot increments. Now, if you have a Foxy or a Skullcracker or something like that, the coax lengths are different because there's coax on the inside of the amplifier that changes the tune. Very important because the coax is active. So you'll find that your output coax makes a huge difference in how the box operates as well. Since we're running this into a dummy load, not so much. In a vehicle, night and day difference on how coax should be run in links. So what we have here is the customers telling me that we're having tremendous input reflect. So first off, let me show you drive. The 32 pill is off. Hello. I don't even have the peak kit on. Look at that. <laughs> Let's go over and turn the peak kit on. So we're going to scooch about 400 watts. About 200 or 165 bird into this thing. Now we've got the amp set up on the 1000 amp power supply. So here's our amp gauge. Pan down just a hair more so you guys can see that. Here's our amp gauge, and over here, the fluke, where is it in video? It's right here. We got it set at 14.4. Okay? So let me uh, turn the 32 on, and I want to show you what happens. Remember, this is a 50 watt slug in reverse. That's 30 watts of reflect going in the amp. Now right now everybody's going, oh my god, everybody's going to freak out. can't believe the input tunes that so far off, oh my god, he doesn't know what he's doing. Wrong. Now I haven't changed this thing at all. Now yes, on the inside of the 32 pill, right up here in the front, is a little Arco air variable trimmer. I could go in there and make total adjustments to it and make it work with this little three foot jumper, but I'm going to use this as a teaching tool. So now let's see what happens if we kick our coax length out. Just take a simple barrel connector. Now, yeah, there's an impedance bump here, and oh my god, there's a little bit of signal loss. And we've seen what we were putting out for power, right? Like four or five hundred bird or whatever it was. Six hundred bird. So we know the amplifier is working. So we're going to attach an additional three foot length of coax to the amplifier. And let's measure and see what it makes for a difference there. Okay? input reflect is already dropped by half and our output dead key has gone up by double which means our amp draw is now also doubled we went from having 10 watts of reflect to 5 without changing a single tune we've just taken 9 watts of reflect between the driver and the amplifier out just by increasing the length of coax. A 205 amps worth of draw. Pulling down to 13.2. 1,000 bird. Now, I'm not disregarding the fact that that little Arco variable might have jiggled around a little bit and maybe it fell a hair out of tune. Let's add another jumper to it. So now we're at six foot. Let's see if we have a huge significant measurable difference once we go to nine. 
Is this the ideal test configuration for this, having all this coax loop together? No, but it serves our purpose. Just took two whole more watts out of it. Now we're down to 12 watts. Just okay, saying. so we, all we did is we went in and we tightened up some stuff. We uh, took out that three foot length, so now we got th six feet of coax here. Tightened up the trimmer. It was on the input side of the circuitry. And I went around and just gave it a really good thorough check for a couple other things, and phew, it settled right down. So reach over there and shut the amp off. Now we're on a 5,000 watt scale on the peak side now, over up there, 5,000 watt there, 5,000 watt slug in average, 5 watt slug in reverse. The same 50 watt slug over here, same voltage, 14 point whatever, 14.4. But oh, so we're just putting about 400 watts in it, just tickling it. So we're seeing if we can get the input tune to come down below 20, because when it came in here it was 30, right? 30. But oh, I'll take two watts any day of the week. Right here. But oh, about two watts input reflex. So with 400 going in, we look over here at this scale. But oh, about 3,500 going out. This is a 5,000 watt slug on average, right here. You can see the peak and the average meters are pretty close to each other. But oh, but oh. Now we're way up. Just by getting our input tune right, okay? So we're seeing now 1,700 watts of peak. We just picked up 700 bird and probably another, what? almost thousand watts in output power by getting our input so the RF can go in. Okay, now we got that all squared away. God, this thing is beautiful. Oh, it's pretty. Very pretty. Let's take another quick look at this. Just let me zoom in here real quick. It's like a little city in there. And you can see where I took and I put um, some Loctite on the actual trimmer cap so that can't be turned. I did that for a reason. We don't want it to vibrate loose again. So on that note, God, this thing is pretty. Goodbye, Mr. 32 Pill. We're going to put the lid on you. This thing is beautiful. Wonderful construction. Okay, on that note, let's put the lid on it and um, let's drive it up a little bit. I want to see what we can get out of it for bird and uh, see what it's going to do for amp draw. We're just going to hit it with a four pill, so two by four. Okay, it's going to get a little loud, so if you're wearing headphones, turn your volume down now. So. I've already got my dummy load so hot I kicked on the fans on that thing. <laughs> Just no small feet. Um, amp ring. Let's go ahead and zero this thing out. So we got zero DC amps going by this thing. Now, we all know fully chooched out would be a two by six or an eight pill with like a one pill hitting it. So you're loafing eight pill into the 32, right? That's not what we're here to do. We're here to show that this thing is working now. So all I'm going to hit it with is the bench two pill and the bench uh, four pill. So we're going to hit it with a two by four. We're going to put about 1,200 peak watts, about 500 bird in it, and we're going to see what happens. So we're going to have to change some stuff around, but I want to show you what this does. So we're hitting it with about 450, almost 500 watts before. We're getting about 34, 3,500 peak out of it and about 1,500 bird, right? So 1,000 watt slug in 5x. So it's reading like a 5,000 watt slug. 5,000 watt slug in average 
Now I had to pull the 50 watt slug because for every thousand watts I get roughly about a water reflect out of the dummy load. Needless to say, we're beating the shit out of the meter movement, so I figured I'd put a 50 watt slug in there. That's fine. Um, our voltmeter here, we've got set at 15.8. We're going to go up with that in a minute, but one under load, it pulls down to 14.7. So. Wow. There's our 12 or so hundred out of the 2x4. But oh, wow. But oh, about our 480 bird. So let's go ahead and start this thing up. Now the fans in low pull 1.5 amps. In high we're pulling about almost three 2.5. I mean we're moving air. Look those little tiny holes. Let's move some air here inside. Say goodbye to that 5,000 watts. our ability to read this thing on a 5,000 watt slug. Let's look at our amperage reading. What? About 270. Pulling it down to about 15. So let me reset the meters. I'll be right back. You guys are going to love this. Okay, so I hooked the D-Rail radio up. We're still at 15.85 volts now. The D-Rail radio doesn't make quite as much peak power as the 2950. It's just short a little bit. But I want you guys to see the difference in how the meters are reading now. This is crazy to me. Okay, so first we're going to start off with the amp gauge. About 380 amps. Here's our voltage going. Thirteen point nine nine. The peak numbers right at five thousand. We'll look at our average. Almost four thousand bird full. Love it. Okay. Let's bump our bolts up a little bit more. No problem. 401 amp. Operating voltage. 14.44. Peak power is done up a little bit. About 51, 5200 watts. Average watts. Almost at 4000 watt mark. So now. Let's take the D-Rail radio out of line. Let's go back to the 2950. Now that we've come up on our volts, we're going to see our peak numbers go way up. Shut that off, turn that on, dial that son bitch back up. slug out. We're going to put this back to 1x. Let me grab this 10kW slug. Put the 10 k in there. Let's see where we're at with peak numbers. About 6,000, give or take. Please note we're not pulling it down nearly as hard. We're on a 15.2. Conclusions. I know that these fans are moving so much air in the high position that the air coming out of the cabinet is just lukewarm at best. At best. 
So 7,000 peak, or pardon me, 6,000 peak, depending on what radio we put into it. We're still shallowing up and drive. But to see 4,000 bird out of a 32 pill, that's pretty good with only a 2x4 hitting it. I'm not too upset about that whatsoever. Well, guys, I got to go. I got to get this thing buttoned back up. And it's got to go away from here. It is fixed. But, gentlemen, this is the Tech 9 32 pill inside and out. And I'm sure the numbers that Tech 9 can get out of it is going to be a whole lot more because, well, he's got, you know, hitting it with his driver at his setup. I'm telling you, this is an amazing amplifier, and I appreciate you all tuning in to check it out. I should drag like an, a Henry 2K over here or something and hit the 2K into this. No, I don't have time for that today. Gentlemen, I got to get. Guys, I got to go. I appreciate you all tuning in and check it out. Remember, we don't talk shit about anybody here at this business. We just fix the box, and that's what our job was done, and that's what we did here today. So on that note, folks, I'll see you. I'm on to the next one. If you got a question or a comment or anything, don't hesitate to call that number that is if it's not covered on the webpage, and I'll take care of you. I got to go, guys. Bum bump from the biggest duck in Idaho. I'll see you. Bye.